Hello, my name is Colin, and in this video, we're going to dive into 3D modeling using Blender 2.8. If you're new to Blender 2.8 and new to 3D modeling, uh, this video hopefully will be a good resource for you in order to learn how to make or model whatever object that you want. In Blender, you're given a host of default simple mesh objects that means 3d solid objects if you go up to the add menu and mesh you can add simple things like cubes and spheres and toruses and cones and of course the monkey head but if you want to create whatever you want to create that's called 3d modeling and this video I'm gonna be showing you several tools in fact we'll go over four tools and all of their little variations and how to use them and their keyboard shortcuts and in the last part of this video we're gonna create this house on on the screen right now and we're going to actually start modeling this house from a default cube so let's go ahead and jump in of course if you like this video if you learned something please go ahead and click on that like button below this video it really helps me out and if you want to see more videos like this one in blender 2.8 or in the godot game engine click on that subscribe button as well and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever i upload a new tutorial so 3d modeling in blender starts with a mesh and blender actually gives you three options objects when you start up a new blender file if you go to file new in general that's how you get what I have on my screen you get a camera object a cube mesh object and a light or lamp object and this cube object by default in fact all objects are by default they are in what's called object mode and object mode is how you can actually move around objects and work with objects as whole things but with a mesh object selected if you go up to this mode menu you see there are lots of different modes including edit mode and that's what you go into if I go into that you're gonna notice a few things change on the screen number one the mesh looks a little bit different because right now we can actually now see its vertices the points where edges meet uh, at the corners of faces of that mesh object uh, you can also see that our toolbar has changed at the side of our screen so now I have a bunch more tools if I go back into object mode and by the way to jump between edit mode and object mode it's a really handy keyboard shortcut it's the tab key on your keyboard tab will go into uh, the other one and then tab will toggle back so tab is really good for switching between those two but in object mode your toolbar at the side of the 3d editor window uh, is quite short you get your basic tools but if you press tab to go into edit mode you get a bunch of modeling tools and we're gonna go over again four of these today we're gonna go over extrude and all of its variations we're gonna go over the loop cut tool and its variations we're gonna go over the bevel tool and how to use it in several different ways and lastly we'll go over the inset faces tool and how you might use that in a productive way now working with a mesh object in edit mode requires that you jump between and this is one thing that you also notice when you go into edit mode uh, these three buttons will appear right there they are for switching between your three different selection modes the first mode is a vertex selection mode and a vertex again is the point where two edges meet at the corner of a face most often and so if you click on a vertex you can select it then you can use any of your move tools uh, really just move for one vertex uh, in order to move it around in fact if you don't want to have to switch from your selection tool to your move or rotate or scale tools in blender 2.8 there are overlays that uh, are are disabled by default up here is a gizmo menu and if you click the little arrow next to it you can turn on move and rotate and scale gizmos those are those on-screen controls and that way you'll have those on your screen even if you just have the selection tool uh, enabled so I like that a lot so with a vertex selected I can move it up I can move it around I could of course use my keyboard shortcut G on my keyboard and move it around great you get it uh, you can't rotate a vertex though uh, that does not work because it's just a coordinate in 3d space on the uh, X Y and Z axes and you can't scale if I tap s on my keyboard nothing will happen but if you have more than one vertex selected uh, and by the way the plural of vertex is vertices uh, although I often call one vertex of vertice which uh, isn't correct uh, you might catch me doing that in this video uh, you can tap s to scale them towards each other and r to rotate, rotate them and of course you can uh, use your gizmo as well the next selection mode is edge selection mode i think you get it at this point if you click on an edge you can move it around 
And uh, of course you can scale an edge because it has a size and you can rotate it as well. And last but not least is face selection mode where you can select a face and um, move it around, okay? And you can scale it, of course, and rotate it and make whatever object that you want. And if you're happy with your object, you're done editing, you can go back into object mode and there you have it, your finished object. Now, a few more things. Um, you can actually go into all three modes at the same time. Uh, if you hold shift on your keyboard and click on all three, uh, you can select faces or single vertices or a vertex and uh, edges as well. And that will work just fine. If you wanna jump between these three selection modes in edit mode very quickly, Quickly. If you're in edit mode, you can use the number row keys on your keyboard. The one key will jump into vertex selection mode. The two key will jump into edge select mode and the three key will jump into face selection mode. That's super simple and really, really handy. If you don't want to move your mouse all the way up here, you can just use one, two, and three. And lastly, if you're working with vertices, edges, or faces, and maybe you have one or more selected, if you right click, you'll get a context menu that's specific to the selection mode that you're in. So right now I get the vertex context menu up and I get very common things that I might want to do with vertices. Same thing in edge selection mode, if I have an edge selected and I right click, uh, I get different options here because you can do different things uh, and some of the same things with edges and faces work the same way too. If you're in all three selection modes, if I go into all three with the shift key and clicking and I right click, yeah, it's pretty impressive. I get all three context menus at the same time. But a cube is quite limiting as a mesh because a cube object only has six sides. It's like a die or dice from a board game. So you only have six faces to work with and it only has therefore eight uh, vertices on the top and on the bottom and only has 12 edges, four around the top and four around the bottom and uh, four around the sides. So how do you get more? How do you get a more complex object? Well, that's where these modeling tools come in. Uh, what I'm gonna do is actually press tab to go back into object mode and then I will press the X key on my keyboard. Yeah, the letter X will let you delete a selected object, so I'll delete it. And I'm gonna go up to the Add menu and add a new mesh cube because a cube object is a great object a mesh object to start any object pretty much with. It's called box modeling. You start with a box and you can make really whatever object that you want, including that house that we'll make later on in this video. So to go back into edit mode, I will press tab on my keyboard. And the first tool we're gonna look at is called the extrude region tool. It's this tool right here. And to work with this tool, I recommend strongly that you only work with faces, although it will work with uh, edges and vertices as well. So with a face selected, uh, if I just click on a face, you'll notice that with this tool enabled, I get this little yellow gizmo handle with a plus on it. Making an extrusion is the same as making an extension. extension is the same basically word as extrusion. If I grab this little handle and click and drag out, I have just made an extrusion or an extension out from the cube. And so now I no longer have that top face in the middle of my mesh. If I go into X-ray mode up here, I can see that there's no little dot. There's dots when you're in X-ray mode on the faces. There's no little dot on that face, but I've extended out the mesh. So now I have five of my original faces plus five more on the second cube. So now if I wanted to, I'll turn off X-ray mode. I could go back to selection mode and I could with my extra gizmos turned on with them on the screen. I can now work with my faces. I could work and pull some edges and I could do a little bit of uh, pushing and pulling and make some sort of a custom 3D model. But using the extrude tool is really powerful because once you can extrude uh, a face outwards, you can start to grow the shape into whatever object really that you want, at least a very blocky version. And that's okay because there's ways you can smooth it out later. So if I go and select the uh, extrude region tool and I start extruding out, I can grab the handle and just pull. If I hold control on my keyboard, it will snap to the increments uh, of my scene, which are the same as the grid increments on the floor, which are actually one meter by one meter increments because that's the default unit meters of a new Blender file. 
Now, if I keep going, if I drag this little plus handle again and hold uh, control or even don't hold control and I let go, what I can do is adjust the operation that I just did. In other words, I use the extrude uh, region tool by going down to this little popover window that only shows up right after you complete pretty much any operation in this window. If I expand this out, it says I just extruded a region and moved it. And I did, and I moved it on the normal Z axis. That means I extruded it out in the same direction that the face was pointing. That's called the normal direction. And away from the face is called its normal uh, Z direction. The normal uh, implies the direction that the face is actually facing. So it's a little weird. It's not the global direction. So if I change this Z axis value, you can see I can change it and I can type in there uh, two because a default cube is uh, two meters by two meters by two meters. Um, I'm gonna keep going here and actually create a simple four-legged chair with a back on it. Uh, yeah, so let's keep on going. If I select all three faces at the same time and I extrude them, uh, and I'll hold control to extrude out uh, and even two meters again. Um, they extrude as a region, and that's why this is called the extrude region tool. If I were to go back, control Z on my keyboard, and extrude each one of these out uh, at the same time, that is much different than extruding them as a region, because now if I go and use my move tool, and uh, move these apart, you can see that I have faces in the middle of my geometry. I've got internal geometry when they're all together. If I undo that, those, those movements and I go into wireframe mode, there are two faces between each of these extended cubes, and that's not a good thing. I don't wanna have faces dividing up my shape. I wanna have all three of uh, those extrusions attached together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to undo those three extrusions, select all three at once, grab my extrude region tool, and then I can pull out and of course hold control. Now if I try to move any of those faces, uh, it is attached, and if I undo that and go into wireframe mode, there is no uh, dot in the middle of that section or over here. Uh, it's, it's what I want, it's a solid shape. So let's keep going. Uh, I'm gonna make my simple chair. I'm gonna select these three faces, use my extrude region tool, uh, pull out and hold control. There you go. I'm gonna extrude the four legs of the chair out. So I'll get those four. Actually, if I hold shift, I can just uh, get the second, third, and fourth uh, legs. And they are separate and we're using the extrude region tool, but in this case that doesn't really apply because they're not next to each other. So if I extrude out, they just extrude as you would expect. And now if I go up to the top and extrude these three in a row and I pull up, uh, you can see now I have my simple four-legged chair. And if I'm happy with it, I can press tab to go back into object mode and I've got a simple chair. The next version of the extrude tool is actually hiding under the extrude region tool. There's a little arrow pointing at the bottom of this button, and if I click and hold this button, uh, I get the four versions of the extrude tool. So the second one is called extrude along normals. And to demonstrate what that does, if I go back to just using extrude region, and I select two faces, so I'm in edit mode right now, if I select two faces on uh, around a corner, and I drag the extrude region handle, you'll see what happens. It extrudes those two faces together as a region, but it has to decide which direction to go. And so what it does is it averages out um, the direction that the top face is facing and the side face is facing, and so it goes diagonally. But what happens if you want to extrude the top face up and the side face out, but still have them attached in the middle? That's where the extrude by normal tool comes in. Uh, if I undo that and I go into the extrude along normals tool, that's what it's called, extrude along normals, uh, and I drag those faces out. There is no gizmo with this tool, unfortunately, but if I click and drag uh, the other way, uh, you'll see what happens. They become attached, but they still both go in their normal direction as well. Now, it is a little bit skewy. The top isn't level and the side isn't level, and that's because we can enable an option down here in the recent operations popover window. Uh, it's called offset even. So if I enable that, that's the fix. It's pretty simple and it's really handy for making extrusions out in different directions, but all attached uh, on your mesh. 
The next version of the extrude tool, if I keep going, is called the extrude individual tool, and that does pretty much the exact opposite of what we just did. If I want to extrude, let's say, this face, and I'll hold shift and select this face and this face, but not as a region because I want to work with them uh, separately after I extrude them, that means I basically want three uh, pillars coming out of my uh, shape. Well, I could do that. So if I use the extrude region tool, again, there is no gizmo here for that, but I just click and drag. Uh, it looks pretty much the same, but in this case, they are actually separate. If I click and scale, and click and scale, and click and scale, uh, with the S key, of course, then I get three separate areas, and maybe that's what I want. The last tool is called the Extrude to Cursor tool, and this tool is a little bit cumbersome and probably not one that you're going to use a whole lot unless you like making random shapes. Um, if I go into this tool, I actually can no longer click to select a face, and right now, by default in this new cube, I've got everything selected. So just a keyboard shortcut for you, uh, if you press Alt A, Alt A will deselect everything in your mesh. So Alt A will deselect everything. Uh, the A key will select everything. So A and Alt A to select and deselect everything. But to use this uh, extrude to cursor tool, I actually need to go back to my selection tool and select the one thing that I want to extrude. So I'll select that face. I'll go back to the extrude to cursor tool. And what this is, is it will extrude your selection to wherever you click. So if I left click out here, it'll extrude to there. If I zoom out, I can just click and click and click and click and click. And as you can see, I could orbit my view and I could keep going in whatever direction I want, but there's not a lot of control here, unfortunately. There's no operator popover, so I can't adjust where I went or which direction I went with uh, that tool, at least not in Blender 2.80. Uh, so I don't find it that handy. If I were to undo that, uh, and then go to an orthographic view in my scene, like if I pressed this little green dot in my uh, axes to go to the front orthographic view, that's where I am right now. Um, what I can do now is actually, you know what, I'm gonna go to my side orthographic view so I can see the, the selection I have of that face from the side. If I now click and click and click. At least now I know that I'm not moving, you know, forwards or backwards or side to side, uh, depending on which way you're thinking of your scene, and they're not twisted at all, okay? So that's the extrude to cursor tool. The last way you can extrude in Blender is by using the keyboard shortcut, the letter E on your keyboard. If I go to my selection tool and I click on a face to select it, and I tap E on my keyboard, just tap E and then move your mouse and click you just made an extrusion. So this is really, really fast and handy. If I select a face, tap E and click and click, I can uh, make extrusions. Um, be warned though that new users might get in the habit, especially in older versions of Blender, because right clicking was common. Uh, if you tap E and then you right click instead of left click, your extrusion will snap back down and it's actually still there. If I zoom in and I move that face up, there is a hidden extrusion there, but if it's flattened, it's actually giving us a bunch of edges in the same spot and a bunch of vertices in the same spot. So there's actually two vertices there, which is not a good thing. It's called having doubles in your scene, double vertices. So you really don't want that. So be careful with that. Um, if you have more than one face together selected, like these two side by side, and I tap E, they will extrude as a region. If you want to use the other versions, except for the cursor version, you can tap Alt E on your keyboard. Alt E will let you extrude uh, faces together or extrude individual faces or extrude along normals. So you can do that with Alt E on your keyboard. I'll select those two, Alt E extrude along normals and I can do the exact same thing and I can use these options down here of course after I do it uh, right away. So I'll use offset even. The next tool is called the loop cut tool and it's right there and it's for actually making new edges. If I select it, you can actually see what's happening. It's for making new edges uh, in your existing mesh. So this cube of course only has six sides and it only has therefore uh, four plus four plus four around the sides uh, edges. So it has 12 edges, but if I wanna make more edges so I can push and pull those and extrude from those, uh, this is how you can do it at least in one way. So if you have this tool active and you hover over your mesh object in edit mode, you can see that it'll put a cut, this yellow line, through whatever edge I have my mouse cursor most closely to. So that one or that one or that one. And if I click, it'll actually put a new 
edge uh, loop cut all the way around the mesh. So it's all the way around. If you have a loop of edges, and I go into the selection tool, and because I still have uh, those gizmos turned on, if I uh, you know, I actually had to select that again. I'm not sure why my gizmo didn't show up before. Uh, if you, by the way, if you don't have anything selected, so if I press Alt A on my keyboard, if you want to select a whole edge loop, uh, like all oh, that one and that one and that one and that one, you don't have to do what I just did by selecting all with the Shift key and then letting go of Shift and orbiting around. You can actually just, I'll press Alt A to deselect all. You can hold the Alt key on your keyboard and click on any edge and it will select when you're in edge select mode if you hold alt and click on an edge it will select all of that loop of edges all the way around your mesh now yes the loop cut tool makes a loop all the way around your mesh but now if I have them all selected you know I could scale that I could rotate that and I could make whatever shape that I want if I want to make more loop cuts I can just go back to that tool uh, right there and I can click and maybe I'll make one in that direction too. So with a cut in all three directions in the middle of my cube, I could go back and use my tools. I could Alt right click on an edge and scale that one up. I'll do the same with this one, uh, scale that one up after I selected it all. And now my shape is a lot rounder. And now I could go into vertex select mode and grab and push and pull and make the shape that I want. The next version of the loop cut tool is called the offset edge loop cut tool. And you use this by actually grabbing an existing loop cut or a, an edge. So in this case, I'm gonna grab my loop cut tool and just make a simple cut uh, like that. And if I go into my offset edge loop cut tool, um, what I can do with this tool is actually spread this or make uh, new copies of this edge loop uh, next to the existing loop cut. So if I just use this offset edge loop cut tool, I always forget the name of that, uh, and you click and drag with edges already selected, away from that edge you can split it into two and it'll leave the middle one there. And now I've got uh, two new edge loops to work with. That's pretty handy. I should go back and mention a few more things about my loop cut tool. If I make a new cut, uh, there are options for that cut. If I go down to my operator popover, uh, I can actually change the number of cuts that I just made. So if I didn't want to make just one cut there, if I wanted you know, a bunch of cuts, I could do that. I wouldn't necessarily make that many. I'd probably make maybe two or three uh, at most, and that might be very handy for you. You can also change the settings for the cut that you're about to make because this setting here is for the tools anyways, is only for the cut that you just made. But if I make another cut, it made just one cut. So you can actually go over, if I undo that, to the tool settings tab in the properties editor, and you can change some of the settings for the tool for its default for every time you then use it. So if I turn this number up to three, Three, and then I make a new cut, it, uh, it put three there. I should also mention that you can click and drag with this tool to put the cut wherever you want along an edge. So if I turn this back down to one and I get my normal loop cut tool and I hover over my object and I click and hold and drag, I can put the cut wherever I want. And if you just click, it'll go in the middle of the edge that you're uh, hovering your mouse over. Now, if you don't wanna to have to always go over to this tool uh, tab in the properties editor, you can actually bring a tool settings bar up in Blender 2.8 at the top of your 3D editor window. This is a new feature in Blender. If you right click anywhere where there's buttons or anything, anywhere where there's an option in this header of your 3D editor window, so not right here, but over here, if you right click, you can add things or change the options of your header. And so I'll go to header and I'll say show tool settings and it'll bring up this new tool options bar at the top of the 3D editor window. So now if I'm using my loop cut tool and I wanna have more cuts, I can just go up here and change the number of cuts to let's say eight, and I don't need to have this open anymore. This shows the same thing as this. That's why they kept that hidden. So I can go back to my you know, render settings or output settings or something. And now if I make a, a cut, let's say uh, right there, well, I've just made eight cuts, okay? I don't know why I would wanna do that, but there you go. 
The last way you can use the loop cut tool is actually by using the keyboard shortcut, which is a keyboard shortcut that gets you to what's called the loop cut and slide tool. It's a little bit different, but it's almost the same. I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I'll press Alt A to deselect everything in my mesh. If I press Control R on my keyboard, Control R will get me into the loop cut and slide tool. And so just like with the loop cut tool, if I hover my mouse over the mesh, it will make a cut. But in this case, I am just gonna click and it's not gonna make a permanent quite yet. Let's say I put a cut uh, right there. Well, that just confirmed which direction it was going in and you can move your mouse now. I'm not holding anything down. I'm just moving my mouse around and you can tell it where to go. And so if you want to go over there, I can click and that will make it permanent. So this requires you to click twice and not just click and drag to slide it. So I'll do that again. I will control R on my keyboard to bring up the loop cut and slide tool. And then I will click and let go. And then I'll move my mouse and click. And there you have it. If you want to put your cut in the middle of an edge, so I'll undo that one. I'll press control R and then you can click to put it along wherever you want. And then you can right click and right click will snap it to the middle of that edge. Okay, and you can even use the equivalent of the offset edge loop cut tool. I actually just learned this recently. If you have an edge loop selected and you press control shift R, it will do essentially that offset edge loop cut tool and you can move your mouse apart and it will split that edge uh, loop into two and uh, it'll make offset edge loop cut. So that's control shift R and then control R just for the normal loop cut and slide tool. So let's go ahead and put those last two tools together, the loop cut tool and the extrude tool. I'm gonna to quickly undo uh, those cuts and I'm gonna use the uh, loop cut tool and I'm gonna cut uh, my cube right, oops, I don't wanna use multiple cuts. So I'll turn that down to uh, one and I'll turn the new ones down to one as well. So I'll undo that and then control R and click and drag and control R and click and drag. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little boxy looking tree, like a very Minecraft-ish tree. So I need to make a smaller face on the bottom of this bushy tree and uh, I'm gonna extrude the trunk of the tree down. So I've got two cuts, I'm gonna do two more. This time I'm going to use the loop cut and slide tool. So I'll press control R on my keyboard and I'll do the same thing, click and then click and then control R and click and click. And now I've got a face there that if I go into face selection mode and select that face and go into the extrude region tool, I can just pull that down and I've got my simple little boxy tree. The next tool is called the bevel tool and it's right there. There's no variations of it, but there's many ways you can use it. If I have it active and then I go to edge selection mode and I select an edge on my cube, if I, uh, click and drag with that selected edge. So if I click and drag, it will turn that one edge into two with a surface along that corner. So you're essentially beveling or chamfering uh, this edge, kind of like the edge of a picture frame. Now, there are lots of options with the bevel tool. Uh, if I want to smooth that out into a rounded corner, that's what lots of people want to do with their, their objects. That's called the number of segments. So I can turn the number of segments up uh, after I do that operation, and you can see I can make a rounded corner. I wouldn't go too dense because that might slow down your computer uh, and that's unnecessary. Uh, you can also change the profile. That means not just a round, even kind of shape, but you can make it you know, more of a sharp round or you can even go almost flat or even inwards. So it's really up to you. Of course, you can change some of those settings before you even do a loop cut. Uh, or pardon me, use the bevel tool. And so I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna change some of the settings up here. I'm gonna make this, my, my bevel always have, uh, let's say six segments and the normal profile. So now if I use the bevel tool and click and drag, it'll give me that uh, automatically. So I could just keep using it again and again, and there we go. But keep in mind that this requires some planning because if, if you want to round out lots of corners in your object and there are some edges that are next to other edges like this edge, well, you can see now that it's gonna be a lot harder for me to uh, drag and make 
that edge smooth after I've already made some of its next door neighbors smooth. So if you wanna make all of the edges uh, rounded, uh, especially around a, a, a face, you might wanna actually just select that face. So I can go into face select mode, and yes, I can bevel out a face. So if I click and drag from that face, it'll do all of its edges. So you can bevel faces, which means the edges around that face or individual edges. You can even bevel vertices. If I go and undo and go into vertex selection mode and I select, uh, let's actually do all of the vertices and then I click and drag away from it. Uh, it looks exactly the same, but that's because there are some options here. One of them is called vertex only. And if I check that box, Look what happens. It, it beveled each vertex as an individual vertex, meaning that we got a nice round corner, kind of like a die or dice in a board game. And so if I repeat that, if I go and select, in fact, I can just select a face, do this actually, and I click and drag, and then I check uh, vertex only, I can get you know a die object, which is kind of cool. The other thing you can do with the bevel tool is you can split apart an existing edge or edge loop. So if I press Control R to use the loop cut and slide tool and I make a cut, uh, let's say right uh, up there. In fact, if you use the Control R bevel tool, you can actually scroll, uh, I didn't mention this, and make multiple cuts and then click and then slide them and click. Uh, but if you, for this example, just have one and you have it right there, if you use the bevel tool and you click and drag away from this edge, it will split that edge into the number of segments that you have specified on your top bar. So if you only had one and you beveled it out, you would split that edge loop into two edge loops. And the difference between doing it this way and using that offset edge loop cut tool is if I were to use that tool, it would make the same two cuts adjacent to my original loop cut, but it would leave the original loop cut there. The bevel tool, uh, if I use it, and drag that apart, it doesn't leave that middle one there. So you can decide which option is better for you. But the good news is that when you use this tool, this cut here, if I go into my edge selection mode, that one and that one, they are equidistant, the same distance apart from that middle line or where that middle line was. Now that's a keyboard shortcut for the bevel tool as well. It is control B on your keyboard. So if I go into edge selection mode and select an edge, if I press control B on my keyboard and move my mouse out, uh, I can bevel and I can specify just by moving my mouse. If I scroll with my uh, mouse wheel, I can bevel that out or add segments and make it round. If I click, of course, I still get all of my options and I believe if I have vertices selected and I press Control Shift B on my keyboard, Control Shift B as opposed to Control B will bevel just vertices. So that's Control B and Control Shift B. The last tool is called the Inset Faces tool. And to use this tool, you have to be in face selection mode because it's called uh, inset faces tool. And so if I go into face select mode and select a face and I click on that face and drag towards its middle, I can make what's called a smaller inset face. That means a face inside of the size of the original face. And as you can see, it's kind of like making a picture frame or a window, or let's say if I undo that and I want to make uh, a square cup or at least a hole in the middle of this cup that goes down into it, well, I can select the face and I can, with the inset faces tool, click and drag and make a smaller face inside, which I can then extrude down into that shape. So if I tap E on my keyboard, I can extrude down and then I can click when I'm happy. And if I were to undo that and then go into wireframe mode, I could see actually what I'm doing and I could tap E and go down and that way I could see where it is inside of that shape. So that's the inset faces tool, it's really simple. Uh, if I wanna use that with a keyboard shortcut, I'll turn off x-ray mode. I could use the I key, the letter I on your keyboard. If I tap it, I can move my mouse and uh, click. And one of the handy things about the inset faces tool is that you can make an inset around a corner. So if I have two faces selected and I tap I, look what happens. It makes an inset, but it bends it around a corner. That used to be really hard to do in Blender before this tool came into Blender. And it's actually not a tool that has always been in other programs like Maya or 3D Studio Max uh, as well. So people actually switched over to Blender in order to use just this tool. I heard about that for at least one video 
game company that was making uh, some models uh, for their game. Um, how you used to be able to have to do this is if you would use the extrude tool, because you can do this kind of with the extrude tool. If I tap E on my keyboard and then I right click to put that face back where it was, which is dangerous because now there's double vertices. If I tap S now, I can scale down and that's really the same as an inset. But if you do that around a corner, so if I undo and uh, do I have, no, okay, it's good. If I have two faces selected around a corner and I tap uh, E and I right click and I tap S, well, that's kind of what happens. And yes, there's ways you can fix that and you can put your 3D cursor in places and scale towards your 3D cursor. Uh, but if I were to just move this up and move this over, uh, you can see that I have almost the same thing, but now that edge is thicker than these ones uh, and that one is thick too. And that's not what I want. So if I undo that and uh, just making sure, oh, yeah, I got to undo one more time. There we go. And then I tap I on my keyboard. Uh, I can inset and it'll be all nice and even. It might not be even though, because there's an option that I already have checked. If I uncheck offset even, which might not be on by default, you can see what happens. It looks all kind of wonky again, but that's the little checkbox to fix it. And the inset tool can even do inset and outset, kind of like extrude. Uh, so there's lots of ways, many things of doing modeling uh, to make the shape that you want uh, in Blender. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and make that house that I showed you in the first part of this video. So I've got a blank empty scene with just a camera and a lamp and my 3D cursor is in the middle of my scene. And that's important because of course, that 3D cursor is where new objects get added to your scene. If you've uh, held shift and you've right clicked somewhere else and you've moved your 3D cursor around, uh, if you press shift S on your keyboard with your mouse in this window, shift S will bring up this pie menu where you can say cursor to world origin and that's how you get that back to the middle of your scene. Now if you go and add a mesh cube, which is how we're going to start uh, making that house, uh, it'll go to the middle of your scene. So let's press tab to go into edit mode and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some loop cuts uh, around my cube. Actually, you know what? I'm going to break out of uh, edit mode back to object mode and I'm going to hold control and drag up this cube so it's sitting nice and flat on my ground. It's one meter down, so it's halfway through the ground by default. So back to edit mode, tab, and I'm gonna press Alt A to deselect all, and I'm gonna use the loop cut tool, and I'm gonna make a cut uh, up and th right through the middle of my house, essentially, because I'm gonna make an edge for the roof that I can pull up. So uh, just so you know, um, this red axis, this is the X axis in your scene. I'm gonna consider that the side to side axis on my, uh, in my world and the Y green axis will be the front and back. So if you're modeling with the Y side to side, just know that yours might look a little bit different than mine. So let's go ahead and make a cut there with the loop cut tool. So click for it right in the middle. Now, if you were to go into the selection tool and select the top edge and drag it up, you can get a roof to your house. Uh, but what that will do for later on is if I were to make another loop cut, I'm gonna use control R this time. I'm gonna try to flip back and forth between the tool and the keyboard shortcut version uh, in this last part of this video. So if I use control R and make a loop cut, look what happens. It, it's not straight across, and that's gonna make it harder to make the bottoms of windows and, and tops of doors and things like that. So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna press escape to get out of this tool, that's how you do that. And I'm going to press Control Z on my keyboard, and that will move that back down. I'll use the active tool again, and I'll make a loop cut by clicking and dragging like that. And this is gonna be the top of our garage, and this will stop that diagonal edge from happening. Uh, the top of the garage is gonna be right there, uh, in fact, I might undo that and just click and drag and put it a little bit lower down. Mm, right about there, probably about the same place. Now I can go and use my selection tool and select that uh, and that uh, edge, but you might notice that, and I thought they had solved this in the beta versions of Blender 2.8, but I can't seem to click through the circle of my gizmo. So if you zoom in, uh, you can then see and select beside your gizmo, if that makes sense. I couldn't select things in here. Uh, I don't know why that is still, I thought they fixed it. So I can drag that up now, uh, or you can press G and then Z on your keyboard and move your mouse and click. So I like uh, both like that. So the garage is gonna come out of this side of the house. And in order to make the garage, it doesn't quite hit the front of the house and the back of the house. It's a little bit shorter or narrower. So I'm gonna use Control R on my keyboard to make a loop cut 
uh, right around there, there, and I'm gonna click and then right click to put it in the middle. And because I don't need right now an edge in the middle of the garage, actually, you know what? I will because I'll have a roof running down the middle of my garage. That'll be a point that I need to move up. I was gonna use the bevel tool uh, with that edge loop selected, but you can see that if I scroll down, uh, it leaves, actually, you know what? I can just leave it like that. I can use the bevel tool and just scroll so I have an edge uh, left in the middle of it. That's great. So I'm gonna put the front and back of my garage. I'm looking at the edge that's gonna go there and there. I'm gonna move it to right about hmm, there. I kinda like that. Let's go ahead and extrude out the uh, garage. So I'll select faces, grab those two faces, use the extrude region tool and pull those out. Uh, I don't care how far it goes in actual fact. I'm just gonna eyeball it here. So I'll just let it go right about there, sure. And I'm gonna make the uh, top of the garage door and the bottom of the garage door. And after I do that, I'll move the roof uh, edge point up. So I'll use the active tool this time and I'm gonna click right there. Now I don't need a middle line in my garage door. So I'm going to use the bevel tool here and I'll use the actual uh, active tool over here so I can click and drag and that will not leave me with a, a middle line uh, and that's great so right about mm, there sure I'm gonna use control R to make a loop cut around the top of the garage door uh, so right uh, there and I'll click and I'll do the active tool this time I'll use loop cut and I'll click and drag this time. And I want there to be a little lip on the bottom of the garage door so that your car would kind of bump over this little uh, cement that's raised up. And the reason we're doing that is because when, we're, when we extrude inward, um, if you have, if you, if you extrude inward and it's at the same level as the bottom face, uh, it would not work out too well. You'd have two faces facing in different directions on the exact same plane and that doesn't look good. So. Uh, let's go and select uh, that garage door face. Uh, in. And I'm still using the loop cut tool, so I can't actually select faces. So I'm gonna use my selection tool and grab that face. And I'll just tap E on my keyboard to extrude and I'll move my mouse and click. So now I've got my garage door done. The last thing for this part of the house is I'm gonna select edges. I'm gonna select that edge and that edge and that edge uh, with shift of course, and I'll drag them straight up. So now I have a roof on my garage. Next up is the front porch and the door. The front porch is right on the ground level, but it's taller than this little lip that we've got going around. So I'm gonna make another loop cut. I'll use Control R to do that. And I will click and then click right about hmm, there, sure. And I'm going to need to use that, uh, I always forget its name. It's the offset edge loop cut tool to split this loop cut, this or this loop uh, down uh, across out and out. So we have our porch sides uh, that we can extrude out from. So I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard. I'm in edge select mode. If I hold alt and of course click on that edge, it'll select the whole edge loop, which is what I want. And I'm gonna press control B uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna press Control B. If I beveled, it would actually get rid of that uh, roof at the top, you can see right there. If I press Control B, I'm gonna orbit and pan down, uh, or zoom and pan down. If I press Control B and then scroll up once, I could get it like that, but it's still not the same at the top, obviously. So the way you solve that is by using this offset edge loop cut tool. If I click and drag now, uh, it won't go one way, but it'll go the other. I can make the sides of my uh, porch. Okay, so right about mm, there. Okay, while I'm at it, I might as well make the sides of the door. So I'm going to hold alt and right click or alt and click, pardon me. Uh, that's the old 2.7 blender talking because uh, you used to right click to select things. I'm going to hold alt and click on an edge to select its whole loop. And then same thing, I'll click and drag with my offset edge loop cut tool and that's gonna be the width of my door. So let's go and select faces. Let's select that one. I need to be in uh, selection mode because it won't let me select faces with that tool. That's a little something I have to get used to. Uh, faces, there we go, that one, all eight 
of these faces and it can get tricky if your gizmo gets in the way. And I'll use the actual active tool, the uh, extrude region tool and extrude that uh, as a region. So now I have a front porch and I'm gonna move it out a little bit uh, more like that. I'm kind of happy with that. The front door needs to have a top. This is not, uh, this is too tall. So I'm gonna do a loop cut, control R, or of course I can use my active tool and I'll click and drag and I like that as a front door height. So now I can go and select those two in with the selection tool, uh, those two faces and tap E to extrude inwards. And I'm gonna have a little window with a rounded top on it right around here. This is a good bottom, that's okay with me, but we need to make a top uh, set of edges for the uh, top of the window. So I'll press Control R and uh, as you can see, this is a slanted edge, but that's actually okay uh, for me because I do want this top to be rounded and it just turns out that's okay. So I'm going to click and then I'll put it right about mm, there. And I'm gonna take th those two faces and I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna tap E to extrude them a little bit inwards and to round out the corners, in other words, uh, in edge select mode, this edge, and uh, this edge, I'm going to bevel, and I'm actually gonna not use the active tool. I prefer the, the keyboard shortcut, Control-B in this case, because Control-B will let you scroll as you're using it, and then you can figure out how many segments you want. So Control-B, and it gave me two segments by default, but if I scroll, I can get more as I'm adjusting it. So what I'm gonna do, is maybe give myself a few more than that. It's making kind of funny polygons that are diagonal, but I'm okay with that. So I'll undo and just start that again. And I like right about there. I'm happy with that kind of. I don't want this point, so I'm gonna go and select uh, this edge and bevel it as well, but I'm going to maybe need to give it a different number of segments here. So Control B, and then those segments are smaller, so I'm gonna scroll down to uh, make them match, okay? It's not the greatest topology in the world. Topology means kind of how your edges and faces are laid out, uh, but I'm happy with it, at least for your, your, your maybe your first time modeling something like this, uh, I'm okay. If you were to put an image texture on this and you would want straight edges across and you'd not want something funny like that, so you might go and do some retopologizing, drawing new edges and erasing old edges and fixing them up so they're all nice square even polygons, but for this, we don't mind. So, uh, last two things, we need to make a breakfast nook. A house would not be complete without a breakfast nook. So I'm gonna go into edge selection mode uh, and it, we also need to add a chimney, of course. So I'll go into edge select mode and I'm gonna hold Alt and right click, or Alt and click, pardon me, on the uh, middle edge to select the entire edge loop. And I'm gonna use that um, edge loop and slide or offset edge loop cut tool, but I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut this time, Control Shift R. And then I can move my mouse out and uh, the breakfast nook will be about, mm, that wide, I'm happy with that. And the breakfast nook's not gonna go down this far, so I'll do a loop cut, Control R. It's gonna start right about, and I'll click and drag, or just click once, and then uh, I'll click right about mm, there. It's a good starting point for the breakfast nook. And uh, let's go and select the faces that we're gonna start with. So right about there, I think. Yeah, I think I don't need to go up quite that high. That's a very tall breakfast nook. And I'm gonna extrude these out. So I'll tap E on my keyboard and move that out. And I think I'll move that edge out. So I'll grab just that edge and that one and move using the move gizmo. And I'm gonna grab the edges on the sides and I'm gonna bevel them. So control B and uh, I don't want them to be rounded. So I'll scroll down until they're flat and that looks pretty good to me. Now, just to note here that um, this face and this face and the ones on the bottom are no longer part of a nice continuous or contiguous uh, set of edges or polygons that flow nicely around. So if I were to do a loop cut, which I'm about to do for the chimney, which is gonna come out right here, I wanna make a loop cut across. Watch what happens, Control R on my keyboard. You see what happens? It doesn't go 
across. It doesn't touch my breakfast nook. It kind of stops there. The reason why that's happening, and I'm going to click uh, and right click to put it in the middle there, uh, is that this edge loop wants to keep going and know to cut through all these parallel uh, edges and cut them in half. But when it gets here, it kind of goes and says, hmm, which one am I supposed to go to? Am I supposed to cut across there or there? It doesn't know. It, it, it doesn't follow the, the easy to recognize pattern. So these are called n-gons. n-gons are polygons with multiple or more than three or four uh, sides or edges. So this face has one, two, three, four, and it had five faces. And that's not a normal polygon with just four or three. So it gets confused and it stops. Just so you know, you might want to think about that as you're modeling, okay? I don't care in this case because I'm not cutting or using that edge here, so I'll just leave it as it is, but I'm gonna undo that uh, and I'm gonna do a loop cut control R and put it where I want. So I'm gonna click and then put it right about, uh, let's say right about there, okay? That face right there, I'll select it, will be our chimney. And this is a little trick, this requires using some of those modifier keys. If I extrude right now, if I tap E, on my keyboard, it'll go diagonally up. But if I press E to extrude, I can then press a direction. I'm gonna press Z, so E and then Z, and I can move that straight up. And when I'm happy with its height, roughly, I'll click. Now, it has a diagonal top, and I don't want that. Well, we can fix that with modifier keys. If I scale, if I tap S on my keyboard or grab that little handle, the blue handle, I can squash it flat, and if I can get it perfectly flat, uh, that's what I'm going for. But what I can actually do, and I'll leave it diagonal, is tap S on my keyboard, like I'm, I'm gonna scale, but if I tap a direction, I'll tap Z, so S and then Z, look what happens. I can move my mouse inward and scale it to be flat. In other words, I'm scaling to be zero on the, on the Z axis. So if I tap S and then Z, and then I type zero on my keyboard, and then press enter on my keyboard, I've just flattened it to zero, S, Z, zero, enter. So good, I think, I think we're almost there. Um, last step, we're gonna inset and extrude inwards here. So I'll tap uh, I on my keyboard or I'll use the active tool and I will click and drag in. Sometimes if you have a stretched out face, uh, what you might need to do is if you got a result that looks something like that uh, or something like uh, that and you got an uneven thickness what you might need to do and this this applies to uh, beveling as well uh, does it apply to loop cuts it might apply to loop cuts as well is you might need to go back into object mode and go up to uh, the object menu when you're in object mode and with the mesh selected you can go to apply uh, scale and in fact, you might as well just do apply rotation and scale. And that basically zeroes out all the, the transforms uh, and that leaves your object actually knowing that it's its own stretched uh, shape. So object apply rotation and scale is always a good thing to do once in a while in uh, object mode. I'll go and press tab. Let's finish this off. I'll tap I on my keyboard to inset and I'll click. That'll be the thickness and I'll use the active tool and I'll drag the extrude uh, or the active uh, extrude tool and drag it straight down. And we have a finished house. So let's just use the selection tool. I'll turn off my uh, gizmos to get a good look at it. And as you can see, we've got a finished house. So that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something, go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps me and my channel out. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Blender 2.8 or in the Godot game engine, click on that subscribe button and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. On that page, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. And that's where I communicate with you guys the most. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.